Bill to the House. Uh, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, um, I too rise to support uh, the referral of the subordinate legislation confirmation and validation bill uh, to the Regulations Review Committee. And as a member of that committee, I certainly uh, look forward to the opportunity to um, addressing, I think, the concern that, um, that uh, Charles Chabelle has raised. Um, when I first looked at this uh, particular bill and saw my name on the uh, speaking list, I thought I probably wasn't going to find uh, a lot that I could say about it. Um, but I'm inspired by my colleague, um, Charles Chevelle, because I think he has, as always, as always, um, is because, because I believe that what he has managed to do is to actually ask the House to confront a serious issue um, around a bill that might not look... Um, on the surface of it to raise such a, such a matter. And uh, he talked about what was going to happen to this bill when it came to the Select Committee. So it would come to the Regulations Review Committee and uh, the committee would, uh, would, would resolve uh, to write to all of the uh, ministers and their departments in relation to each of these uh, particular um, uh, validation provisions. So they uh, relate to the Animal Products Act, the Commodity Levies Act, uh, Customs and Excise Act, New Zealand Superannuation and Retirement Income Act, uh, Road User Charges Act and the War Pensions Act. So there are ministers in this House who will receive uh, a letter, I think, from us um, asking for uh, confirmation that, in fact, there is an ongoing uh, need for the, uh, for the order um, or the levy and have that um, so that we, we are able to report to the House that, in fact, the criteria for um, confirmation and validation uh, have been met. But I think um, Charles Chevelle raised a really good point, it is, which is, what is the point of that? We already do that when um, regulations are referred to the Select Committee. We don't actually need to have um, a confirmation and validation process in order for that to occur. So whenever regulations are passed, they are referred to the Select Committee. If we have concerns about uh, any particular elements of them, uh, we scrutinise them and we do write to uh, departments. And maybe the, maybe the question that we want to consider at the Select Committee, and, uh, and as, I, as I say, it never occurred to me that this would be an issue, but having listened to the inspiring contribution of my colleague, I'm just wondering whether perhaps we should write not just for confirmation that the confirmation and validation um, requirements are met, but whether this is uh, whether each one individually of itself should be in legislation that requires this process to occur, and if in fact it doesn't require this uh, form of debate and this form of scrutiny then perhaps that's something that we could, we could add to, and by, by way of value in our report back to the House, is perhaps a proposal that um, we address this when we debate the primary legislation. Now, if we look at the dates of the primary legislation, uh, of course they, they change, they change um, uh, in each of these validation bills. But, uh, but uh, for example, we've got the War Pensions Act, which dates back to 1954. The Superannuation Retirement Income Act um, is 2001, uh, but the Social Security Act, of course, is 1964. Um, and then we've got uh, some in the 1990s, uh, but then Road User Charges Act 2012. So it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to which uh, regulation-making powers um, seem to be subject to legislation that requires confirmation and validation uh, with respect to the, um, to the uh, stated time of lapsing uh, if, unless they're either confirmed or validated by Act of Parliament. So, I mean, I, just, I, I actually honestly think that perhaps we, it is time for Parliament to have this debate as to whether this very process is one that's perhaps um, past its use-by date and whether, um, as a result of this legislation, we could ask ourselves whether we need a confirmation and validation process um, or whether it should be reserved uh, for the very exceptional circumstances. Uh, these don't seem exceptional to me. Um, 
uh, commodity levies around navel oranges, kiwi fruit, nashi pears, arable crops, cereal, silage, maize, and asparagus. Um, apart from some of them describing my favourite fruit and vegetables, uh, that would be particularly asparagus and uh, nashi cereal pears. <laughs> uh, cereal silage is not something that really has uh, found its way into my diet. So. Uh, it, um, um, well, it was, really, it was really just those two, asparagus and nashi pears. But, but the point that I'm making is, is that why them and, and why not other um, commodity levies that, that are applicable or are they all the um, levies that are applicable under the Com Commod Commodity Levies Act um, 1990? Um, and the other thing that I find extraordinary about this legislation, and it's the same with every other um, one of these bills that has preceded it, is that the, um, the first job after setting out the purpose of the Act, which never changes, the validations, uh, don't prevent, um, do not, uh, validations to prevent expiry do not cure invalidity. So that's to ensure that uh, if there's something else wrong with the regulation, that, that this is not a cure-all, it just deals with the question of expiry and then the Act binding the Crown, but then the repeal section, and this is the same in every single um, one of these uh, particular bills, the uh, clause six of every single one of them is the repeal clause. The subordinate legislation, confirmation and validation Act 2011, 2011 number 96, is repealed. But the 2011 um, legislation would have repealed the 2010 one, and the 2010 one would have repealed the 2009 one, and the 2009 one, the 2008 one. I think you get the drift. And so, although the, the technical, um, uh, well, I, I, I guess niceties of the, of the legislative framework um, would appeal to somebody who doesn't want redundant legislation sitting on the books, um, which is something that I've been a champion, a champion for, 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 for many, many years. Um, but I, I think that a, a, a regulatory redundancy, Mr. Mallard. Perhaps regulatory redundancy is, is, the, is the kind of um, the, the, the kind of phraseology that I actually do appreciate as a champion for quality regulation and uh, a very good um, legislative framework. So even though it might meet that test. Um, one does have to come back to the essential question, which is whether we could, we could cure the real problem, which is to address it up front when the legislation is passed. And I don't actually recall any of the debates that we've had on a subordinate legislation confirmation and validation bill that have actually gone into the detail of any of the um, particular orders that are being validated. And it's, it's just... Well, uh, well Tre Trevor Mallard is going to obviously take a, a call on this and speak for some considerable time on his memory of uh, other um, examples, uh, which of course will find their connection to this particular, that will find this particular connection to this one through the repeal clause, <laughs> because the repeal clause will be, um, uh, it will have it exactly the same effect as the repeal clause does uh, in this particular one. So um, I did suggest to the WHIPs that it, it, it probably was going to be relatively challenging to, um, to you know, spend the entire uh, 10 minutes that one has to speak uh, on a bill on an important debate in any matter in the House. Um, and I didn't think that there was going to be an opportunity really for me to explore uh, some of these issues. But the fact that I have um, managed to uh, do so uh, entirely within, within standing orders, but also uh, as a result of the absolute inspiration that Charles Chabelle does represent in bringing these important matters to the House. Now, I don't know that others um, can see... Um, why, why these things are so important, but I do think that they are, because we are often criticised as a parliament for not taking the opportunity to address some of the 
I don't know, some of the historic ways that we've dealt with things and not have a modern way um, in order to address these issues. This, is, this may have been designed as a process to protect uh, against um, orders being passed that are not subject to a debate in the Parliament. There may be rhyme or, re rhyme or reason that applies to that historically, but I seriously don't think any of these um, particular uh, provisions have been reviewed, and I hope that our select committee, the Regulations Review Committee, can in fact raise that with the individual departments uh, when we write to them. So I do support this bill and look forward to it coming to the select committee. Cole, Julianne Genta. Speaker, Tanakoto Etifare.